we come to realize wonder can be real after all. Wonder? Are you kidding me? Did, did Harry go to Hogwarts to learn wonder? Wonder is real, you know? No one's even disputing that. I mean, people wonder things all the time. Right now I'm wondering why a park with a magic land is selling itself with wonder, while a park with wonderland sells itself with magic. It is 4.12 p.m. on Thursday, March 14th, 2019, and as soon as I finish recording this intro, I will be on my way to the AMC La Mirada 7 in beautiful La Mirada, California, to catch a 6.30 p.m. screening of Wonder Park. I'm some jerk with a camera, and welcome to One Movie Later, where I compare and contrast my preconceptions and postconceptions of movies in theaters now. It has not escaped me that for a movie vlog series on a YouTube channel ostensibly a about theme parks, one movie later really doesn't cover all that many movies about theme parks. And it's not from lack of product either. Over the last year and a half, no fewer than three movies set primarily at theme parks have come out, and I didn't cover any of them. Though granted, two of them came dead last in Twitter polls, and the other one... I ain't touching, but I just couldn't ignore this hot mess. Based on the trailers, Wonder Park appears to be an animated film about a girl who makes up an imaginary theme park that magically comes to life, full of talking animals for some reason. The film is a co-production of Paramount and Nickelodeon, both of which have interesting histories with real-world theme parks. The thrills on Paramount. Paramount Parks, the only place thrills are Paramount. Paramount bought a bunch of pre-existing theme parks in the 90s and slapped the Paramount logo on them, hoping to rake in some of that sweet Disney money without really putting forth any savory Disney effort. I mean, aesthetically, the whole reason why it's theoretically interesting for a movie studio to get in the theme park business is to replicate the Disney model and make guests feel like they've magically walked into a movie. But the most Paramount-y thing about Paramount Parks was always a few generic thrill rides named after Top Gun or Tomb Raider or something. And it took less than 15 years for Paramount to get tired of the theme park business and sell all of those parks to Cedar Fair. Nickelodeon, meanwhile, you'd think would have a leg up on getting in the theme park business, well, with the whole kids worship it and see it as an identity unto itself thing. Hell, for about 15 years, their official studio was at Universal Florida. Legends of the Hidden Temple was recorded in front of a live studio audience in Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios, Florida. But for years, Nick just couldn't seem to decide whether they wanted to piggyback off other parks or invest in their own. They let Universal open a Jimmy Neutron ride, and it closed after eight years. They licensed SpongeBob to Universal, but only for gift shops and meet and greets. They made a SpongeBob 3D ride, and they couldn't decide where to put it, so they rented it out to dozens of theme parks and aquariums and zoos and museums. They had a bunch of Nickelodeon Central Kids areas in various parks in the 2000s, but none of them survived past 2011. They opened their own hotel in Orlando, which you'd think would be a slam dunk since hotels are one of the most profitable parts of a theme park enterprise, but nope, it turned back into a Holiday Inn after 11 years. Don't settle for an ordinary hotel when you can stay at the Nick Hotel, where kids ruin... <laughs> Finally, in 2008, they opened Nickelodeon Universe at the Mall of America in Minnesota, because gift shops within theme parks do a lot of business, so why not a theme park within the world's biggest gift shop? <laughs> I've actually been there, and I would charitably describe it as a ludicrous random cacophony of carny rides. The only rides that aren't completely generic have nothing to do with Nickelodeon, and you can tell they've been there since the place was Camp Snoopy. Yeah, Snoopy. Cool, cool, fun. Yeah, Snoopy. So you've got a company that sold all its parks to Cedar Fair, and a company that bought its park from Cedar Fair. Not the first two companies I would trust to understand the appeal of theme parks enough to make a decent movie about one. And if you think I'm being too harsh, this movie originally went into production under the title Amusement Park. Not making that up. It was a movie about an amusement park called Amusement Park. I am not amused. The park within the movie is actually called Wonderland, but for legal reasons the movie has to be titled Wonder Park. 
And it just goes downhill from there. You know, the thing about kids' movies is, by design, their target audience doesn't get a seat at the film discourse table at the time of release, so whenever adults deem a kid's film an irredeemable piece of garbage, there's always a semi-decent chance that history will prove us horribly wrong. Hocus Pocus was largely written off by the critics at the time, half the failed kids' films from the 80s went on to be cult classics, even the 2003 Cat in the Hat movie of all damn things has gotten considerable reappraisal lately. So take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt, obviously even I won't know for sure until I see it, but everything about Wonder Park just seems so insufferable. It looks like a fake shitty kids movie that a marketing executive played by Eddie Murphy would be trying to sell in a different real shitty kids movie. The first teaser trailer was actually kind of effectively atmospheric and intriguing, if still completely inexplicable, but then the second trailer saw fit to show us some of the jokes. Ow! What the chuck? Oh no. He's allergic to volunteering! What? And as if all that didn't sound bad enough, this movie is a baton-passing hatchet job! You see, the original director of this was Dylan Brown, a former Pixar animator who apparently learned a few too many things from Lasseter. He was fired from this movie just over a year ago and replaced with David Feist, the creator of Cow and Chicken, of all things. So this is yet another example of a studio changing tracks at full speed and a director saddled with material that may or may not be well-suited to him. That always results in a better movie, right, Superman's upper lip? But it gets even crazier. Apparently, when all was said and done, Paramount didn't think Feist made quite a large enough contribution to deserve a director credit, and they sure as hell didn't want to give one to Brown, so this thing is hobbling into theaters with no credited director. But it doesn't stop there. The big damn blue bear who looks like one of the Charmin bears was originally voiced by Jeffrey Tambor, but then he got accused of sexual misconduct, so they replaced him with Christopher Plummer. I mean... Ken Campbell. And apparently, the animation in this film was partially outsourced to Skydance Animation. And guess who they just hired? <sighs> Is it too late to cover the Woody Allen movie? And on top of all that, Nickelodeon is apparently planning to use this movie as a stealth pilot of a Wonder Park TV series set to premiere this fall. So they're really banking on Wonder Park mania sweeping the country. I, for one, would so much rather go see Captain Marvel again, given the choice, but instead, God help me, I'm seeing Wonder Park. This is the life I've chosen. Wish me luck. The director's willing to work for deferred compensation, but I don't think we need a director on this one. It pretty much directs itself. All right, uh, we got a lot to unpack in this particular edition of One Movie Later, but let's just start by uh, introducing ourselves. I am Garrett, I am an actor, and I am excited to be here, but I am not excited to have seen that film. Oh boy. I'm Morgan, I'm The Wire, you've seen me before probably. Uh, I am also not happy to have seen this film. Really, if you're watching this and you didn't go see Captain Marvel instead, what are you doing with your life? But anyway, you're uh, here now. I'm Chris Nembergall. Uh, me and Matt do a show called Remain Seated, and I'm overjoyed to have gone through the penance of this film. <laughs> You've gotten it over with. Yes. Now you can... Yes, exactly. I'm now now, now I, your conscience is clear. I've atoned Whatever. for my sins. Exactly. Everything I do from here on out is, is a freebie. It's a rebirth. It's, it's rare that you see a movie that disproves God. <laughs> which I think is... Cool. Oh, yeah, this is so much to unpack here. Holy God. I liked it. I'm just kidding. It's god-awful. This movie is a nightmare. This mo nothing happens for any rhyme or reason. None of the characters feel like like actual people. I mean, obviously they're animals, but even animals should have the personalities that feel in movies like this that, that feel humanoid. None of them did. None of the humans felt like humans. N nothing. It, it's. It, let me put it this way. I now feel sympathy for Randy Moore. <laughs> This is how the Randy Moores of the world see all theme parks, and suddenly I understand where Escape from Tomorrow comes from. It's like, this is... 
goddamn excruciating. I feel like three-year-olds would dismiss this movie as being too babyish too for them. It was like a bad dream that you kept waking up from and then falling back asleep and resuming immediately. One of those dreams where you think you woke up and then you look outside <laughs> and it's just balloons everywhere and you're like oh i'm still dreaming there's wonder park if you've seen the trailer it makes the movie look much more coherent than i just what, and and the trailer sucks and the trailer so doesn't take that as it is but it is worse movie it is than the worse trailer. than the trailer makes it look it yeah. really is i am angry but spend your is... money on norm of the north there is nothing more insufferable than a movie supposedly purportedly about the wondrous powers of imagination that is unimaginative. The theme park itself sucks. <laughs> it is yeah. not a good theme park. As, they as professional theme park critics, this they, is our opinion. It's just a bunch of generic rides. It's like a bunch of spinners. Really. Th it's a bunch of spinny things. It, that's all it is. It's and bereft of imagination. Also, also spinny it's, things, other spinny things, roller coasters, Something that slides. throws you. Like it, it, th they keep trying to paint it as this creative little girl's, you know, wondrous imagination, when really all she's adding to it is, oh, instead of horses on the carousel, they should be fish! Yeah, half that's, the time... That's an island of the time That's twist. literally an island of adventure! Half the time the twist is that the spinny things are magic somehow. Or like they're made out of licorice or something. But some it shit. flies! <laughs> Let's make a gobble to go down of spooky news! I think there's a very sinister reason why the park is so goddamn generic. Why it's not actually creative, why it's just kind of superficially creative, is because they thought, if this movie's a huge hit, which, fuck, fat fucking chance of that happening, we don't want this to be too hard to actually build. Wait, so they already slashed the budget of their imaginary- Pretty, Pretty much! much. <laughs> this might be a theme park, but it can't be that expensive. <laughs> I seriously think that's why. I seriously think oh that's why. Oh my god, build a couple spinny things and we've got Wonder Park. I believe that Paul Pressler directed this movie. <laughs> Also, the theme park is in the middle of a forest. Yeah. Like, how do you get to this theme park? What did they have to do? Okay. Like the people. How many? How many? How, how many, 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 many the people come from? Yes. How many? They just appear. Okay. In cups of how many snow? politicians do they, they have to pay off to destroy this forest <laughs> and all its natural habitat? It's the village. <laughs> what it's happens? The village. And, and hey, what happened to the animals? It's, they were forced to work at the theme park after they was destroyed. After their homes were destroyed. I'm figuring out this movie, guys. You could definitely see that they switched directors halfway through production because you, so many scenes in this movie just don't click together. No. Uh, like, I, think, I think they were switching scripts like yeah. the yeah. guys, through production. I think Absolutely. we went through at least 20 different scripts. Like, yeah, well, the, the story keeps changing. Like the, the goals that need to be accomplished are different every five minutes mm -hmm. and they'll be actively working toward one goal and then suddenly they need to do something completely unrelated, and it's like, where does this come from? Oh, there's this flabbity blue. Should, oh, we were working on the shenanigans. Should attempt to recap the plot and just see what happens? <laughs> I don't think reciting the plot's gonna help. I'm pretty sure I blinked and I lost track of the chain of events. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's so okay. if, you're, if you're watching it and you're not paying attention, it's just going to be a series of disconnected things. The story doesn't progress so much as things just keep happening. And at a certain point, you're just sitting there waiting for it to stop. By the end, like the last scene, I my brain went into like Tom Servo mode going, end, end, I'll talk, I'll give the position oh, of the rebel base. The just stop this movie. The worst part is that you can see that people like further down the pipeline put effort into what they were doing and like it's well animated there's parts that are imaginatively visualized but they just sort of was there a point where this was a workable script you know what i guarantee it was it was that the, in in the process of animation every time a shot was finally finished it had gone through you know previs it had gone through you know layout it had gone through animation lighting all those processes the producers were like we can't change a thing if, the, if it's a finished shot, it's going in the movie. Figure it out some other way. Wait a minute, are you suggesting Nickelodeon rushed an animation for money? I know! <laughs> Since it's... If you're like me, uh, you actually should see the movie for all of those reasons, because <laughs> this is completely insane. 
Like, this movie is so just seeing is believing. Like, the entire time, I'm just like, my mind is exploding with so many questions that not never get answered. It's not a good movie. I will never defend this as a good movie because it's not. It's really, really bad. But I think there's a bit of a room-esque quality to how bad it is. I really do. I This movie will give me nightmares. <laughs> Did it feel like there were a lot of extreme close-ups on the characters? Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is what it's like to watch Wonder Park. Is everyone going like this the whole movie? Whoa. And everyone, hey, hi, we're, I'm a magic porcupine. How are you? Hello. Woo. Nailed it. Those close-ups like were at least interesting to me. Like it kind of gave. They were like just a, abrasive. It kinda, I just thought it gave everything like a fisheye lens kind of look, which I don't really like they, see they in were animation. Well animated. I'm so used to animations being kind of like the same, especially like very generic animation. They're like, oh, that's something I haven't really seen. Again, they did it way too much. Like every other right. these close-ups. I don't know. For me, at least, not the worst thing about the movie. It's like Eight well, Crazy Nights. Th there's a lot of competition. <laughs> The animation in this movie isn't bad. No, no. There's a lot of detail in the water, in the carpet, in the grass. Like the, the fur on the, the fur on the animals is the, well rendered. The it's... animation is fine. Why is Mila Kunis in this movie? Mila Kunis is in this movie. Yeah, she Mila Kunis. She was oh, okay, That was cool. Mila Kunis. I don't know. Cool. Maybe she thought she was recording a, a particularly elaborate Family Guy <laughs> cutaway. Like we're, oh, Meg's a warthog now? Okay, fuck you guys. John Oliver's in this movie collecting a oh, paycheck. The only lines that I got any sort of unironic, even light chuckle out of were from him and I suspect they were improvised. A lot of his stuff sounds like outtakes from last week tonight. Like yeah. it sounds like stuff he would say on the show, but they try to make as much of that John Oliver money. Like they pay for him to be there in there. No they put him in character. every fucking scene yeah. of this there movie. There were no good yeah. characters in this, but he was the least bad yeah. just because he was John Oliver. Talk about the bear. What is there to say? The animal characters in this movie are such a waste. The only one that kind of has a character is the porcupine. His character is that he's, he's able to yeah. He's He's, he's the three safety. He's, he's Zazu. He's John Oliver. He's right. the All the other characters. One. He's British. Yes. The beaver's <laughs> only character trait is that they move quickly and they slap one another. They're voiced by Kenan Thompson and Ken Jeong. What? Yeah, Kenan Thompson and Ken Jeong voiced the I beavers. didn't catch that. What pisses me off is that is one letter off from a Kenan and Kel reunion. I know. Instead of Kenan and Kel, it's Kenan and Ken. The okay. bear's only character trait is that he has sleep apnea. In one scene, he's like fearful and cowardly, just like the porcupine character. But for the rest of the movie, his only character trait is that he like falls asleep randomly. The warthog, who is supposedly the leader of this group of animals and is oh, characterized as the leader, has no character. She's like the girl, which makes her the mom. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought the warthog was a bit of, bit of a shrill, a little bossy for my taste. Fucking Where... social justice warthogs. I want to point out that the voice of Peanut the Chimpanzee is Norbert Leo Butts, who is a Broadway actor. He was the original Fiero in Wicked. Wow! All the cast, man. Jennifer Gardner only had one hour available yeah. to yeah. record all of her dialogue. She's first build in the yeah. goddamn movie, and she's in like five minutes, maybe of five it. minutes of screen time. Yeah, and, and she remarkably looks like Princess Anna from Frozen. She looks she's way too young to be the she, mom character. Well, she just yeah. has well, like, yeah. well, that's just kind of an animation trope. Well, but the dad that? looks like the dad like, from uh, Boss Baby. Like in Incredibles, Elastigirl looks way too young yeah. to be animated. They all yes. look like yes. basic, so, you know, just fine. human character models that are like every fucking three. Yeah, there's movie. nothing interesting there's, to look yeah. at. Every design in this movie of the characters is just so generic. It's borrowed. The fact that you can't see the porcupine's eyes is literally the most creative thing about any of the character designs. Yeah. There were no fart jokes in this movie, shockingly. Yeah. Shock Shockingly, yeah. Shockingly, oh, I kept waiting for One point for Wonder Park. The writers of this movie, who by the way are also producers, so it was not oh, just a, no. not just a work for hire. Fuck yeah, dude. Also wrote the 2010s Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie. Oh. So these are real, you know, masters of their craft. Those were also Nickelodeon movies. Yeah, they were. There are so few <laughs> well done Nickelodeon movies in the recent era. I should but the say. SpongeBob movies are pretty good. The SpongeBob movies are good, but I'm I'm more so Probably saying not like because of Nickelodeon. No, right. Think yeah. about like Barnyard and oh, God. Um, Dude, like why that. would you make me remember Barnyard? This, this <laughs> is what Wonder How Park. How dare you? This is what Wonder Park reminds me of. Is Barnyard? I, I'm, I am, like, I'm I, watching Barnyard 2.0. I oh, will yeah. say Wonder Park is getting a TV series on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Oh, it has to be right. Is it? Is that just? Oh like, yeah, it's more or less a done deal. I mean, I guess they could cancel it if well, this, if the movie really bombs. flops. Who I want to hear the imitation voice actors for Mila Kunis and, uh, and John Oliver. John Oliver especially. <laughs>
They get well, the guy who voices Sheen to do it. No, they'd probably get Rowan Atkinson just as revenge for the Lion King. Oh, that's what it is. Wonder I would be okay Wonderland's with that. on planet Sheen. If you've got really little kids, if your arm is literally getting tired from doing this, <laughs> if you just want 86 minutes of rest from doing that, yeah, put on this movie. It's a brightly colored doodly bop that'll amuse them <laughs> this temporarily. Is one, this is one of those movies where if you put it on, you like your dog will just start barking at it. <laughs> If you take your children to any movie this weekend, or this month, period... And Captain you want Marvel. Them, yes. If you want them to be influenced by a strong female lead who teaches them proper human values, go what? see Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. See that movie... Avoid Wonder Park like the Wonder goddamn Park. plague it is. As much... It is a Holy kid's movie. shit. And I understand that, but... Ugh, I'm angry! But kids movies, kids movies need to be held accountable. They need to have value. Kids deserve better. They yeah, need kids to have deserve value. better than this. Well, you know? I don't even think it would make a good, like, drunk watch. Oh, movie. I disagree. No, I felt no. drunk the entire time. Maybe, maybe if you're <laughs> drunk and high and just suffered a massive brain hemorrhage, well, the then maybe. Brain well, then you can write maybe. the movie. I was stone cold sober and I was having a hard time even concentrating on the movie in front of me with literally nothing else to look this at. This film was purgatory. If you're with your friends, you got a bottle of your favorite alcohol, uh, just start chugging away, play a drinking game. The Wonder Park drinking game. Take a shot. Every time they say the word <laughs> splendiferous, you will be dead. You will fucking die. I am not exaggerating when they when I say they use that fucking word like 20 times. It's like, it's think like, of some other bullshit like after a while. If they could copyright that word, oh my god, they would have. You claim to be this movie about imagination. Think of some new bullshit words besides just the one over yeah, and over but, again, you pieces of shit. Yeah, but if they... Make I hate everyone involved in this movie. <laughs> You'd better hope I don't find out where you fucking live! And all the roads that lead us there are winding. Hi, I'm beloved YouTube fixture Anthony Goldmark. You know, we like to have a lot of fun here on One Movie Later, but sometimes that fun can go too far and result in comments that might be easily misconstrued as violent threats against subpar filmmakers, and that just isn't cool or groovy. And I want my viewers to rest assured that such rhetoric is completely facetious and wholly devoid of sincerity, and that we here at One Movie Later fervently believe that even people involved in making terrible films are still technically people, and as such deserve a certain level of base respect. Except maybe the guy who got fired for sexual misconduct, he can go fuck himself in an open wound. And all the lights that light the way are blinding. If you care to see this movie, and <laughs> I wouldn't, I do not recommend you see this movie. I recommend you keep watching this video. This thing to us tell you the plot is the safest well, way to digest this material because it's like looking at Cthulhu through like a hundred sunglasses and a mirror. We absolutely should recap the plot. I'm gonna put a spoiler warning up, but amazing. I'm telling you, don't see the movie, just keep watching the video and, and don't care about spoilers because us trying to recap it will probably be the most entertaining part of this video. So spoilers, I guess. Spoiler warning! Ah, okay. There are many things that I would like to say to you. But I don't know how. Welcome back to the first ever six hour edition of One Movie Later. So there's this little girl who's imagining this, this amusement park in her mind. Do you hear the voice of, of Jennifer you, Garner as the mother? Do you hear is, the, voices, the voice of Jennifer Garner and the little girl, and right? they're talking about how. Wonderful about, they are. And they're imagining this theme park, and it's getting ready to open for the day, and we meet our animal characters, and we've got the porcupines who build things. The beavers build things, okay. and the porcupine okay. is the safety and inspector. See, we're already, and they're, they're, we already don't know where to There's a Mickey Mouse flower topiary that has like two extra little ears growing yes. off of the ears to yes. make it I I didn't, right of I saw yeah. that. I didn't notice man, that at all. Man, Holy yeah. shit. Man, hidden Mickey's everywhere, guys. I'm joking. <laughs> so we see them build this theme park and interact with this theme park, and for three minutes, this is a normal movie. And the, then they the, hit a button to open the park, and then families with children just materialize out of the ground. Literally, yeah, like the they the 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 teleport it there. In little puffs of golden light, suddenly the park is just full of people. The founder, the Walt Disney slash Mickey Mouse of this park is a chimpanzee. Named Peanut. A who, chimpanzee. Who magically conjures things up. 
But when we cut back to the room... He's got, like, a magic wand thing? He's got it's a, a marker. A literally it's a magic, magic marker. marker. It, oh, so we find fuck out, you, movie. We fuck find you, out movie. that it's actually the mom and the daughter who are imagining this in her bedroom, and they whisper things into the ear of their stuffed toy monkey. Yeah, they ASMR into this monkey. And she then the monkey, out. the monkey, in, in the fake reality... Who is elsewhere, yeah. somehow... Fucking hears their voice like the voice of God, <laughs> and then takes credit for the idea that just came to him. Yeah, in out of the blue, and everyone thinks the monkey so is genius. He truly is the Walt Disney of this. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> this is, and the girl is her ab- is his ab- 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 <laughs> This is how the monkey reacts to the voice. This, this is this, us trying to is... be straightforward about the plot, you guys. Peanut, Peanut hears the whisper. We're, we're, we're three monkey, minutes in. We're three the minutes monkey in. hears the whisper. Sinister. The monkey's oddly sinister. About about how he takes credit. The monkey's like, thank you, mysterious voice. <laughs> that was when I, t- I turned. That's when the movie turned for me. When I realized, like, oh, this movie's going to be insane. It curdled like, like bad milk. Something just happened here. The visitors that just sort of appear out of nowhere <laughs> and kind of just blindly accept everything they're yeah. given, it shows that this is definitely a creator's fantasy and not <laughs> well, they don't, they don't, they don't tell you this. The only way to actually get to the theme park is to stand in the middle of a street and just stare straight off. <laughs> and then you blank and you're there. All these, you know, magic glowy people. All the lost souls. That like, there's, there's this one, uh, yeah, this is purgatory. This, part. <laughs> this one adult woman, like, oh. swoons over the monkey. Oh. oh my god, I can't believe I'm riding it with this monkey. It's what the Not, not what enough. The fuck? Not what enough. the fuck is this movie? Not enough women ah. horny for monkeys in children's cartoons. No, I would say that for you. So it cuts back to the little girl and her mom Jennifer Garner in her bedroom and they're having a grand old time just imagining <laughs> this theme park and drawing up the fake blueprints. And it's insufferably twee. It's, I mean, oh God. they're just giggling and mom's like, you know you can do anything, honey. You just gotta believe in yourself <clears throat> and keep that spark alive. And it's like, oh, this is going nowhere good. And instead of emotional beats, they have musical montages. Yep. Oh, yes. like, that's the only, the only, oh it's, it's emotional now. The only true emotion is music. <laughs> and then she's like, Mommy, could Wonderland be real? <laughs> yes, of course, sweetie. The dad comes in, the talk of men, and goes to the wife and says, I know you guys are having fun, uh, but uh, we have an almost full DVR. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be missing some shows. I'm like, this marriage is in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't get serious. I'm going to start doing some very aggressive deleting. If we don't start binge watching How to Get Away with Murder right now... Then this, this, I'm filing oh, divorce so papers be, tomorrow. I've been slaving my ass off at job, which we never find out what they do for a living. Long Island Medium isn't gonna watch itself. This, mar- yeah. this marriage is such a sham. Anyway, oh, so absolutely. the next day, this little girl decides to physically build a roller coaster in her backyard. She somehow conscripts every other kid in the neighborhood to help her construct this roller coaster. She has. So many friends who will just apparently never go to school because literally she's... hundreds. She has a little cult of followers. <laughs> this whole movie is just a cult recruitment video. Her and her weird inventions are the only entertainment these kids have. None of these kids have <laughs> smartphones. Like, no. like, oh no, 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 a kid does. It brings to my other favorite scene where there's a a little boy that's in love with her, right. and he, on, on his phone is a picture of them together with a heart on it. This kid needs to be in a registry. That was the same kid who had that amazing punchline when they survived the crash, and he goes, Thank Krishna. (laughs) (laughs) People have different religions. That's funny. (laughs) Diversity. So the roller coaster crashes, and they cause a bunch of damage all over the neighborhood. (laughs) How about that classic, that, that brilliant comedy joke, you just break a new ground, she runs past this guy and his toupee flies off. Yeah. What? There's, there's also a I thought he had hair on his scalp. And a, the dog chases the man. The dog chases the man. This don't takes forget, place don't in fucking the vacuum, Marmaduke. There is a this is a Marmaduke part two. There's, there's, a a there's, there's a fat eating fucking like whipped cream by oh. himself in this yeah. All the classics. She goes, break, break, break. And he goes, it broke, broke, broke. Cool, man. This is, this is the snip People got paid to write this! People got paid to write this! Uh, what am I doing sure wrong? What am I doing wrong? Did you guys notice that the woman who screamed over the chimpanzee was kissing the guy who loses his toupee in the real world? 
Did you guys notice that? They probably just reused the same. Yeah, they, they probably yeah. They, they clearly they, reused the same model, but they didn't even change her shirt. Well, I did or, not know that. Now, so this is like the Wizard of Oz, where <laughs> this is, she's just imagining all these people from her. But well, none of the other characters. That's just well, clever like, for this so, movie. So while they're making this giant ramp construction in the entire neighborhood, there's no parents saying like. No. No, no, they're, like, they're all no, just having a big like, orgy together. Like, are, like, the parents are all having a key party somewhere. They're like, ah, hey, fuck the kids. Like, I love it. Parents are having are building this roller coaster. Our kids have signed a death call to the uh, There is a loop care. in the middle of someone's it's backyard. Loop. I don't know. And it breaks. It, it breaks. breaks. Of course it breaks. See, this is why we invented video games so this wouldn't happen anymore. <laughs> exactly. They stay inside. They play Fortnite and everything's fixed. Uh, video games cause violence. No, video games prevent violence. When I they prevent build, bullshit like this. When I wanted to build a roller coaster as a kid, this I had to four different This is trying to be straightforward about the plot. But let me do it. Oh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep, keep going. fucking going. Okay. okay. Oh Can we talk God. about yeah, yes. when she gets in trouble? Yes, go. She doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> she gets rewarded. Oh, you shouldn't do that, honey, but I'm so proud of You're you. You're gonna do some chores. That's it. it oh. oh, I love when a movie has a big scene and it turns out to be pointless. Like yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Basically, it just shows, <laughs> oh, look at how whimsical she is. We just the destroyed the town. Like, also, how rich is his family? The dad's writing checks. Oh, to oh here you go. Oh, here you. It's like an annoyance this more than white, anything this else. This is white privilege. I want to say this right now. I have Absolutely. so many questions about what this family does. Well, who he is? Who is that father? The drill sergeant. None There's of these a drill people. sergeant at the house. The only smart person in this and entire he, town. She should go to mil uh, yeah. military school. That yes, she should. I'm fine with that. I'm down. This girl is insane. Bye. This is a sociopath. Everyone just joins in the madness, and the theme park takes over the entire house. Yeah. This is why you say no to your children. The fact that she built a roller coaster and destroyed the neighborhood is the catalyst for building the model, because the mom is like, well, you can keep building Wonder Park, but not in a way that destroys the neighborhood. Great, well, now let's build a scale model. And I'm thinking, let's just have that be the first scene. Yeah, let's yeah. build a model. There are there are no, but you need an action scene for the things there in are, the trailer. Yeah. There are yeah. no, no restraints on this child. She can do whatever she wants, and the parents just let it happen. They, they don't care. Do they're by the way. The they're drunk. Her and the mom are just playing with the amusement park, playing with the amusement <laughs> park, playing with the amusement park. <laughs> And the mom gets cancer. Well, wait, Undisclosed sickness. Disease. It's never, cancer. She, 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 Come on, it's basically they cancer. They never actually say the c word, but she we says, know she's sick Mommy's because sick. she's looking no, sad. No, she, she gets animated mom yeah. disease. It's the disease you get for being a mom in an animated movie. I'm very sick, and I'm gonna go someplace where they can help me get better. So she's so she's going to chemotherapy. She goes to where the other lepers have to go. Yeah, she's she goes <laughs> to the Hawaiian she, she island with, with the leprosy <laughs> leukemia, whatever the fuck. She it's such a cynical attempt of, of the producers to go, oh, well, we got, you know, Up made a lot of money, so yes. we gotta make this sad. That's got all a sad thing. Of. In Up, the scene where he's on the steps of the church, and it's and it's the saddest thing you've ever seen. Imagine if instead it had just been an extreme close-up of him just going, <laughs> whoa, my wife is dead. What is it? Minutes and she makes sad face. Good God. Sad. And we know Mom is, like, so perfect, and she oh. just had this wonderful relationship with the little kid and like they away. never argue her father adores her her mother is just is so perfect and never punishes her perfect 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 all the time and die there was definitely a draft where she was straight up dead there was a yeah. and, and well, some of it got animated and they had to be. this movie went through so many drafts and so yeah. many directors and so many storylines <laughs> there has to have been like not one but I bet it came very, very close to them just straight up killing the mother. Probably, yeah. And then this being about coming to terms with grief. But that would be too sad. Or somebody said, no, they always kill the mother. We're going to be different. Ugh. We're going to do something even worse. We're going to not <laughs> kill the mother. Which we're going to we're we're gonna gonna toy with your emotions and go halfway like fucking cowards. It honestly Please. is worse. Like, if you're going to go that far, and just fucking kill the mom. That was the moment I got fucking angry at this movie. Because... <laughs> My, I, I don't know how many of the people in this room know this, but my mother actually died of breast cancer I'm about, sorry, uh, about seven years ago. Yeah, and so so I've been where this girl's supposed to be. So as soon as it did that, I'm like, okay, is if this crazy movie's going to try to fucking go there, let's go there. Let's. I will be rating your performance movie. This is your goddamn performance review from someone who's been through this shit. Let's 
fucking roll. Let's enroll in this clown college. When the mom gets sick and goes away, June packs up all the theme park. Yeah, yeah. She puts she, it into the closet. Like, yeah, and it's supposed to be like this really away. sad moment where she's about to tell Peanut With the a pop song playing. With a pop song. Like, the most saccharine, sugary, I'm so sweet. sad. I'm so sad. <laughs> and she's about to tell Peanut what to do next. And then she's like... I just can't do it. And then she takes and puts all of her theme park stuff okay. away, and it's all very sad. Think of how much more effective that scene would have been if she had just stopped talking altogether. If she had just kind of given up midway and not actually spelled out, I can't do it. Yeah. It's like, imagine if she had just fucking, she was in the middle of it, and she just fucking put the doll down and just uh, defeated. Yeah. You know what would have made that introductory sequence from Up so much better? If... They stopped every two seconds to say, I'm very sad because yes. my <laughs> wife can't have a baby. I we can't do this that. anymore. Oh, uh, look, we're up a hill now. Oh, wait, you can't get up the hill here. Let me help you, my beloved wife. It's I like, am dying. You are by my bedside, so I can tell you that I am dying. Wow, that's, that's a problem. lot of ties. That is emblematic of the whole script problem with this movie, is every single scene. The one is... script problem with yeah. this movie. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, we'll, we'll, get, to we'll, get, to we'll, we'll get to more. We'll get to more. We'll get to more. In case this movie wasn't heavy-handed already, we'll get to when it just becomes insane. The girl's character has completely flipped to to where she is obsessively paranoid about safety and practicality. Yeah, she's a whole Why? different person. Again, she there's is... a draft that's missing here. She is terrified for the safety of her dad. And, and she's, she's a neat like, freak. Yeah, she's a neat freak. She's cleaning up the house. She's like, oh, dad, you can't drink this milk. It's going to expire in three weeks. She's like doing his taxes or something. Yeah, she's <laughs> completely insane. Did her mom like, get sick from no little kid has ever been. a dirty house? No, they, they don't explain why there's she's a no, neat freak There's all no connection. Yeah. This girl is insane and right. should be committed because, like, holy shit. Like, everything this girl does is crazy. She has insane <laughs> mood swings. Her attitude, like, how optimistic and hopeful she is versus how, like, my negative, mom's dying negative. and I'm sad. Uh, and it's all dour, well, like, changes. Not just between scenes, but between shots. Matthew Broderick, who voices the dad, yeah, Matthew Broderick tries to dad. cheer her up by bringing over her irrelevant aunt and uncle character. We never see again. Ne so good, never literally. Never. And the aunt and uncle are just at, like everyone. They're like, oh, what are you? Hi, we're the aunt and uncle. We're gonna be wacky for three seconds. We brought you a fairy tale. Were they anybody voice actor wise? I I have no idea. I could have sworn it was Nick Offerman, but Nick Offerman is way above this. She doesn't want anything to do with the Ferris wheel. So she takes the blueprints for the theme park, chucks it in the fire. The scene where she burns the plans is a more brutal, emotional moment than a movie than the movie had earned. Cry, damn it, cry! And there just happens to be a roaring fire in the fireplace? The dad wrote so many checks to the city, he can't afford heating anymore. Destroying that theme park blueprint was probably the best thing that ever happened to that town. <laughs> I think like 90% of that town's budget is just the shit this girl does. Like the mayor just runs on the plane like, we will stop June this year, but nobody ever can. The missing corner of the map to Curly's gold, essentially, goes up the fireplace like the fucking torn up letter in Mary Poppins. And so Dad sends her to math camp. because she's a math champion or something. Because she's what? what is she? That's not, that I mean, never I mean, established. I mean, she and is an engineer. All the I guess. Meanwhile, neighborhood kids are very sad because they want to play with her wonder park. Because again, this girl oh, is the and only the stuff friend. she makes. Guys, I know the term the... Mary Sue gets thrown around <laughs> quite a lot. However, is there any flaws in this girl? No. Well, we'll, well talk about that. She, she, she's a neat she, freak she for five suffers, minutes. Yeah. She yeah. suffers from Book of Henry, Henry Syndrome, where yeah. she's a huge self-centered asshole. Oh, she's trying to kill, her, she's trying trying to kill her neighbor, yeah. Where nobody <laughs> thinks she's an asshole. Right. Well, well, we'll get to the Ayn Rand implications of this movie in a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, that's my shot. Oh, that's what I, I can't about. wait for that's that. That's that Fazio's time. Okay, so, so, we're going to math camp. We're going to math, where the kids are all singing this song about pie, which, by the way, song? I never the know. kids are so Today, excited to be going to math camp. Today is Pi Day. We saw this way. movie on Pi Day. I don't know if that was intentional or... That's it, karma. It was such a small part of the movie, though. It couldn't have yeah. been intentional. Guys, guys, God is real. Guys. <laughs> God is numbers. God, God, is, God is numbers. God is 42. Numbers. <gasps> <Jeez>. Which? <laughs> Sorry. How did you know? Oh, she has this weird fantasy sequence where her dad is just surrounded by pizza boxes. She decides she can't possibly leave her dad alone for that long. To be fair, 
I don't blame her for being worried about Matthew Broderick because he did commit vehicular manslaughter, but... Yes. So she needs her friend to pretend to be sick to stop the bus. She gets this fake vomit to... From nowhere. She escapes from the bus... And for some reason, the bus drives off having forgotten she's there. My, they didn't I take the a head no, count. No roll count. Funny. Fuck the buddy system. It's a McAllister family moment. I think they're just happy to get rid of the kid, honestly. Because yeah. they knew, like, as soon as she got to that camp, she would have start, like, she would have burned down half of the, the campus. <laughs> yeah, they, they knew what they were doing. We distracted her. Go, go, go! I invented a flamethrower. I invented a flamethrower. It's really cool. It's for the family. Oh, God. It's for fire world. It becomes, like... Homeward bound for yeah. five seconds. The little shard of the map that wasn't destroyed in the fire. Oh and my it's god! Flitting around it's like Charlie whoop, Buckets. Whoop, 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 golden dog, whoop, golden whoop, ticket. Yes. And it's so close, and she can almost get it. And then she goes into the woods, and then it becomes spirited away. And she now finds an abandoned in, roller coaster. Yeah, I'll get in it. Why not? I was worried about my dad five minutes ago, but who gives a shit? So she's going to the park, and, and it's like an abandoned amusement park. She instantly pieces together that it's Wonderland. I'm having a delusional breakdown. This is amazing. <laughs> she never has that moment of, what is going on? Have I gone insane? Am I it was, dead? It was, it, was, it was like if Marty McFly was instantly like, oh, I've gone back in time. Well, this is normal. Like, if that was me in that situation, I'd be like, oh, wow, an abandoned amusement park. <laughs> yeah, I would ex I would half expect to run into Adam the Woo. Well, also, yeah, is that, is that how you get to uh, Wonderland? Like, two at a time, the world's slowest roller coaster? <laughs> then the talking animals show up. Yeah, the, oh, the talking animals, completely as she envisioned them, come yes. running towards her. She instantly pieces together, oh, these are the talking animals from my, from my from, imagination. From my imagination. Who are the welcome bear? Hi. There, there's never a moment of, I created magic you. is real. My imagination has created this like, place. There is one brief moment where she's like, oh, I'm having a dream. I'm, I'm, I'm having a fever dream, whatever. But it's during the chase sequence. <laughs> now, it, it's completely out of order. Well, it feels like this movie Love might it. have been so Fuck chopped yeah. up that there was a time when these were in the right order and then those things got taken out. There must have been one draft that showed everything from the park character's point of view and it would have been about them realizing that their magic all comes from this little girl and that would have been the story. The Wonder Park has been hit by this catastrophe oh. called the darkness. Earlier in the film, they established all these little monkey dolls that are sold in the park. Which, by the way, don't look like the monkey mascot. No! no. They call them chimpan zombies. The and chimpan then they're like, zombies. run from the chimpan zombies! And they have a little song, they're like, happy, 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 happy. They've got like axes and they're like little orcs and they, they run around causing Catastrophes. Yeah, and like tearing off pieces of the park to go and throw into the darkness. Into the void. The void. And they activate the Omnidroid. Which is this horrible ride which like picks you up and throws you to another part of the park. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, like yeah, that. no the, one would the, want the ride, ride. The ride is you get in the gyrosphere from Jurassic World and this <laughs> robot picks yes. you up and throws you across the park like a baseball pitcher and another robot catches you and you survive and that's the ride. So there's, there's no insurance at this theme park. They trick the chimpan zombies into getting in this rocket ship that takes off and kills them and all. And explodes and kills, and kills them all. And kills them all. all but then there's yeah. more of them later. So and yeah, it, it's, it's <sighs> never ending. So the okay. only goal that remains consistent throughout this gobbledygook that follows is that they're trying to restart this one particular ride. It's a big spinning yeah, thing. The clock yeah, the clockwork swings. Yeah, yes. it's the core of the park. And if they get it back up and running, the magic will work. I mean, they keep forgetting that that this is the goal and like going to do other weird like diversions throughout the park just so we can see more of the park, I guess. There's some chase scenes that don't fucking matter at all. Fuck them. Whatever. She can't exit the park. No, but, she like can. she tries to exit the oh, park I at one point. Oh, forgot about that. Yeah. And yeah. and like there's a force field. She tells them what's going on. That oh, I I was the girl who who gave the the monkey the idea. Oh, fuck this movie. And I think I created the darkness. By, you know, by being sad that my mom was sick. By the way, amazing lessons for kids is that their grief. It is bad. An apocalypse. Your grief is bad. You're a bad person for being sad when your mom is sick because that causes a bad dark 
cloud over the you, depression is unhealthy that's, and you need to force yourself to be happy at all times yeah, kids. I mean, yeah. it's like the climax of inside out got lobotomized it, oh mm-hmm. god where the whole idea of that movie is like it is okay to be sad sometimes yeah. and this movie is telling you sh- fuck that other movie no it is not you will be happy, young Missy, and the talking animals in your fake theme park will thrive only if you are happy. You being if you sad shut killed your imaginary you. friends. Uh, Why would you do that to them? You did this! You! You, you must, did this by being sad! You must be Fuck happy. you! Guys, this might be the best movie ever made. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> Step aside, <laughs> Citizen Kane. So she has to we'll form a more. bridge over the volcano or something? I don't know. They need to get from one part of the park to another, and they need to form some sort of bridge. They can't figure <laughs> out how to form them. Just find something that's tall. These beavers, I can just, like, chop down. Chop down, down a tree. Yeah, just chop yeah. down a goddamn tree. Hey, look, I made a bridge. It only took me, like, what, 10 seconds. 11 taps. Full disclosure, I don't even know what subplot you guys are talking about. So in order to make the bridge herself, rather than just getting the fucking the fucking multicolored minion woodchucks to chop down a tree or something, she goes into the robot Omnidroid and like ties herself up in knots. She apparently goes to like the pirate ship and gets the rigging. Oh yeah, you don't see oh. that happen. No, yeah, this is and, a, and uh, then she's just got all of this heavy rope and tackle and everything. Make it all go and away! So she gets into this thing, and all of a sudden she's noticing that there's all these different joysticks that are far away, you know, too far away for her to, for to, to mess yes. with anything. And I remember thinking, oh, uh, so what she's gonna do is she's gonna go uh, become friends with her little animal guys and they're gonna work together to make the spider move what a cool lesson but no she instead <laughs> makes a contraption so that she can do this stuff and the music is positive showing this that this is the correct way to do it Forget Let me make teamwork. Clear, this movie yeah. is not about teamwork this it's movie... about dare i say it something else she is a super mathematical engineering mit level she's hyper genius, genius. This nothing is... will stop me from building that train remember kids Teamwork is bad, and repressing your emotions is good. You understand? We're all caught up? Okay, yes. cool. So she gets across the thing, and she's and she's going through these weird canyons, and she stumbles into this mirror universe. Oh, my God. Zero, zero, G, like, zero G land. Zero yeah. G land, where she's just floating around. It's all balloons in there. She takes the bad acid, basically, and she winds up in this fucking mirror floaty universe. Oh, ha, ha, ha. This is fun. This is fun. Ah! This little girl is very, very sad that her mom is sick, and that's why all this bad stuff is happening, except when she's not sad. Right. There's this, like, office just floating yeah. by itself in the middle yeah, like of this, where the monkey is, like, like hold up for the apocalypse. He's organizing jelly beans and M&Ms and Skittles by color. <laughs> because she's supposed to be her, right? Yeah, yeah he's like a reflection of her. So he's also her. insane. That's where we get the metaphor for her locking down all her emotions so she can't be hurt at all. Except this is when the movie just tells us what's happening yeah. and what we're supposed to feel. The monkey's telling her, yeah, I just heard this voice whispering in my ear. And she says, oh, what? Well, a woman's voice. And he actually says, how do you know that? And then it's never brought up again until the end. And he never pieces together that she's that the magic girl. girl. Like if, you meet, if you met God, you'd be have more of a reaction to it. <laughs> oh yeah, he gets he captured. Gets captured yeah. by the, the fucking zombies followed them and they're swimming along in the zero gravity going smooth. Happy, 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 happy banana. Banana. The monkey sacrifices himself because he's able to like grab her and throw her at the exit I was, I was at happy. the cost of being captured himself. I would have loved it in the scene where the little monkeys attack the regular sized monkey if they had just eaten them. Just, 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 just like the villain in We're Back a Dinosaur Story. Yeah, yeah, the like they descend on him, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they all go away and it's not there. All that's left is the marker. Emotional. And then the roller coaster scene happens for no goddamn reason. <laughs> There's no reason. Again, another script. Somebody's storyboarding like we have to do it. We, we finished it. The, the, the we band- rendered it. It's got to happen. I am still trying to figure out how that bear got to the top of that roller coaster. That, 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 okay, the big scene I, in the trailer where where the bears on the roller coaster <laughs> that had no bearing on the plot. Yeah, yeah, I don't think literally no bearing. Ah, ah, boy, and if kill me. It, a bear <laughs> just fucking wakes up in a roller on top of this fucking roller coaster track, and the and the next <laughs> and the next fifteen minutes is just trying to get him to stop, and they get licorice. Fr- ah! there, there's some kind ah! of. Somehow has to 
to do with them crossing this ravine they've been trying to cross for 30 minutes? Why didn't the spider just, like, like brought them up to where the, the part where the Oh, yeah, the Omnidrain. Yeah. yeah. Why couldn't yeah. they just, yeah. like... Yeah. I think the roller coaster scene was Nickelodeon's pitch to Universal Orlando to build <laughs> the Wizarding World of Wonder Park. Now, guys, I know you tore down all of our Nickelodeon things, but <laughs> we're going to bring it back. Does anyone remember... What happened after the roller coaster scene? Because I honestly oh, they crossed the bridge. They crossed the bridge to, finally. We're right. now adjacent to the end of the movie. Finally. Oh, okay. I know. The monkey gets thrown into the void, and right. she's like, "I created That's the right. void, so I have to go in there and get him back." This void is so reminiscent of the place where Bing Bong dies in Inside Out. <laughs> I thought that Peanut the chimpanzee was going to become the surprise villain. And yeah. they were going to pull a Disney Oh, yeah, I thought they were going to, like, yeah, brainwash him or something. That was my thought. If only someone loved you, June. When I yeah, lost the inspiration he, voice, I had to take control by my own means. So she goes into the void, fucking rescues him. Who cares? Rescues him with the power of Bendy Straw slime. Oh, she realizes oh. that she can still whisper in his ear and oh, make him do magic, which would have solved the whole problem to begin with. <laughs> and uh, they start There's doing no that. There's no place like home. Yeah, I was just thinking that. They escape the void by... The convoluted method of her inspiring him with whispering to create a magical slide that they can slide out of there with. While sliding in midair in the slide, which is like appearing in front of them, she realizes that the chunk of blueprint that she saved oh, yeah. earlier, her mom scribbled her name on it. Yeah. It uh, spells out her name in cursive. In a pattern that tells them how to turn the gears on the big clockwork spinny ride to save the park. And they do that with the magical slide, like turning the gears. So did her and mom the know music. that the place was real and magical? I guess. All of the supporting cast are getting their like crowning moments of badass because apparently that was needed. They save Wonder Park. Yeah, so that- so Wonderland! They, it's not- they, they Sorry, save Wonder I hate Land. that! I hate that! The, I was so confused! The fucking glowy people teleport back into the park where- Where the fuck did they come from? As Why if are they here? Fears. As if There's nothing ever happened. What? Did they uh, buy tickets? Or are they just- Who are these people? Actually, they, are, actually, they, are, they just uh, raised prices for admission. I think if you try to get into Galaxy's Edge the first match <laughs> without a reservation, you'll show up in Wonder Park. Yeah! <laughs> well, that's, that's the trick! And, and then they look up at the cloud of darkness which still exists over the park. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But it's pink. Maybe oh. it'll never go away. Oh, yeah, here's Maybe a... it exists to remind us to focus on the light side here's of a things. Here's a complex issue which... that this movie has not earned. Which, by the way, not a terrible philosophy. But, yeah, the, but, movie, but here, the movie did not earn it it's at so all. so little, so late. June says to this warthog, you're the glue that holds this whole team together. And I'm like, what did she do to earn that? What did any of the Nobody does anything, but that's why we haven't been talking about the animals, because June does everything. Yes. I want to see the sequel to this movie where the Warthog tries to start a union with them on Wonderland and gets immediately shot. Oh. I, was, I would <laughs> say... He snatches the pen and says, I have seized the means of promotion. Yes! <laughs> Wonder Park. Solidarity Wonder Park. Porcupine confesses his love to Milas Kunis. Mil Mila Kunis pig. Mila, Mila, yes. Mila, Mila, Mila Kunis. Mila. The porcupine was in love with the warthog. Yes. This, Which, was a, this was a thirsty movie. The porcupine being in love with the pig was at some point in the writing process supposed to be like more the defined. metaphor for the kid who's in love with her? Did that seem that like makes the intention to you? Because they don't follow up Me? on the kid in love with her. They it just, they just so let that go. Done. And you finally see <laughs> the porcupine's eyes for the first time. In oh, the yeah, he gets oh, a he, metaphor. Oh, yeah, bo uh, butter bo jump. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, the oh, yeah, That's yeah. the yeah. No. Like She kisses him, and his, and his, his thorns over his eyes go, boing. She's allowed to leave now, so she does. And then she turns around, and it's not there anymore. So the girl runs home. And she's like, Dad, I'm sorry for being out all night and you didn't know where I was. And he's like, what are you talking about? I just dropped you off at math camp half an hour ago. The spirits did it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Uh, of course they can. <laughs> and then the mom comes back and she's just fine. And she's fine, yeah. She, yeah, no, dead. So oh, they yeah, don't, they the don't pull the also. trigger on the mom dying. She looks the same, too. Yeah, she, she didn't go through any struggle, She's apparently. not bald. She's, she's not. shiny. 
Oh, God. She looks like Princess Anna. Dude, I, I don't have the heart to tell you this, but I, I found a Zed under my left eye. And <laughs> her mom is hideous now. She's going away. Because the movie can't use the C word. It right. can't actually talk about what the mom's going through and what the possibility of the family losing her might actually do to them. She remains in denial until the danger passes. She never confronts the danger directly and deals with the reality of the situation that's put in front of her. If there was ever an attempt at a tangible metaphor within the park for like what she's going through, it was completely destroyed in rewrites and, yeah. and reanimations. Because the, the idea of an all-consuming blackness that sort of swallows up everything you enjoy is not a bad metaphor for grief. I mean, the never-ending story, basically. Right, right, right. With the exactly. Nothing. Yeah, the nothing. Way better. If your mom's sick, it's fine. Like, if you love her enough, she'll come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, she didn't come back? Well, I mean... Oh, well, I, I, mean, I mean, that's on you, you, didn't you know? Basically, uh. the whole message of this movie is... Hey, bad things will happen sometimes, but it's okay. You can be happy and carry on exactly as you always have. And if you don't, then you're disappointing all the imaginary animals who have to fight off the chimpanzee zombies. You will. You piece of shit. So much you piece of shit for being sad. Oh, you are a piece of shit. You are horrible for. Yeah. That's also, like if that's you're... Wonder Park. She builds a very oh. expensive, very detailed. Disney Imagineering quality model of Wonder Park, Wonderland in yeah, her backyard. Man. Everyone's there. Yes, her millions of followers. Welcome to the family. Yes. Have some Kool-Aid. She's selling chimpanzee zombies that are the same quality of the real chimpanzee oh. zombies. How did she make them? I just figured it out. That little girl is the devil. She's like Damien, basically. This started and, as a sequel to The Omen. Yeah. The <laughs> draft. And then they're like, oh, let's make it a kid's movie. Yeah, why not? When yeah. I was a kid, I built a model theme park. I took pictures of it. It was cool. A few parts of it moved because I got those Kinex roller coaster things. And then I took it down and I built a better model. And then I took that one down and I built another one. Maybe there's a darkness realm somewhere where my creations <laughs> are being destroyed. Oh, they're, you, you've ruined them all. They're all being no, attacked no, by no, chimpanzees. No, 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 you monster! They're being attacked by you orcs. You monster! They're attacked by orcs because I changed it to like the Warhammer Lord, Lord of the Rings. That's oh, cool. oh, oh, nice. When you made these uh, this theme park uh, models, did the entire neighborhood worship you as a god? Uh, no, nobody else knew about <laughs> it. Oh, that's so strange. Because I just built no, the models. So How did that, that happen? There's not really much you can do with it once no. it's built, other than look at it. They're not going to be allowed to play with it. If I was eight years old and I went to my friend's amazingly detailed theme park model, and I saw her talking to a chimpanzee doll very sensually, I'd leave. <laughs> She's it's weird. Grow. This is the kind of kid that like Angelica from Rugrats. Yes. Oh. You know, at least Angelica's peers knew she was a yeah. Yeah. Remember the Everyone just blindly worships the ground June walks Maybe we'll on. get across I would have. Yeah. I would have loved it so much if at the end of the movie it revealed that she was just in a coma the whole time. <laughs> okay. She got hit by a truck. Yeah. She's been in a coma. This has all been her delusional imagination. Her mother's dying and only fighting the darkness in the imaginary magical monk amusement park roller coaster will bring her back to life because she's that awesome and, and meanwhile you, you just hear beep beep yep. beep <laughs> well then they pull the plug at the end and credits yep. and that's the end and that's <laughs> and yeah. then a cheesy pop tween song <laughs> plays and that's uh, Wonder Park ladies and gentlemen wait I thought it was notice? called Wonderland <laughs> Under park. Under park. The artwork exists for the creator. Exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't the whole movie is about who are her. To use yes. it are just completely made up. They have no demands. They have no self. They rely on her to give them meaning. Everything is about her. It's all. It's all for you. It's all for you. It Look at me, down. Damien. It's exactly. all for you. Yes. It's all of the creator's vision. Everyone else is and just sheep. The park is very much the creation of one singular mind. I am the with one the mom. The park. Even the mom is like, I like it when the ideas come from you and the people who are actually at the ground level who presumably are enjoying the park make no demands Absolutely, of their own. Absolutely, yes. They have no needs. 
They want what they are told to want. They enjoy what they are told to enjoy. They will get in this dangerous robot that throws them across the park because that is the creator's vision. Even like Peanut is a perfect example of that because it's not his idea. He is working to better this one person. There is no teamwork in this movie. Like the animals work together, but she doesn't work with the animals. She does everything on her own. And the movie mm -hmm. very much yeah. makes a point of that. At, uh, there are points where she could team up with the animals, but she chooses not right. to. Right. She works time on she, her own. The only time she works with them is when she's telling them what to do and they're saying, we believe in you, June. Absolutely. Yep. You can do it. We knew you'd come through for us. God, it is such an Ayn Rand wet dream because there's never any pushback from that no. idea. No. no one ever questions it. Like, at least in Ayn Rand fucking novels, there are antagonists who think, no, actually, you should care about people. And there's a, there's at least the attempt at push and pull. Here, it's just straight up wish fulfillment on behalf of someone who's an asshole. The director of this was fired for sexual misconduct. Again, maybe tying into that Rand thing of, yeah, I'm entitled to this, cool. squeeze. Cool. This movie's going into theaters with no director credit. So that's such a perfect commentary on like the failure of Randian politics. It's so <laughs> devoted to the creator that ultimately there is no creator. And the movie's gonna bomb and fuck you. Yeah, in all of their entitlement and wisdom and genius, they put all of their talents and power in this world into creating something nobody likes. Exactly. A remarkable 31% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Solidarity forever. I'm amazed yeah. it's that high. Well, I'm awesome, clearly. I don't need Who to cares try. If I cause misery around everyone around me. I deserve to do whatever I want. Sociopath. This house is now my house. Sociopath. 20 years later, she's at the top of a clock tower, sniper rifle, <laughs> aiming down. And her mom's still this is the only telling her in her ear, like, you can do anything to you want to, honey. You want the anything. wonder in Wonderland. I do. Wonder in Wonderland. <laughs> Splendiferous! 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 You damn dirty apes! Damn you all the hell! Anyway, it's time for What's the Attraction? I don't even feel like coming up with an excuse for why there would ever be a Wonder Park attraction, so just use your use your imaginations, whatever. Uh, starting with uh, uh, Matt. Uh, Wonder Park the Ride, you start as a... Um as a uh, agent uh, searching for building code violations on every single one of the <laughs> rides. Uh, and then you go to the end of it where June uh, pays you off with the check. <laughs> and June's dad pays, <laughs> pays you off and you get to smile with it as your, as your final picture. I committed the helium, the helium right? And then, and then the very last scene, you just see the like all, father, these people like dying, all these people yes. dying as the, the park, as the, the roller coasters have tumbled. And you just wonder at the horrible hubris that you've caused. But then you remember you're rich and that actually that's a happy ending. Chris! Where you enter the, the, the Tron machine and you get like, <laughs> like a, digitized by the machine and you're just a roller coaster tycoon sprite walking around <laughs> mindlessly enjoying everything that is, that is thrown at you and you spend all $8 in your wallet and then you have a little sad face pop over your head that says, I want to go home now, but you can't exit. <laughs> but you're one of those asshole ones where like a guy made a uh, roller coaster ride that goes on forever. If you show that you're unhappy with anything, they pick you up with the tweezers and they just... <laughs> Uh, Morgan. A bunch of cheap carnival rides set up in a parking lot somewhere <laughs> that's been painted by somebody on LSD, and that makes it more creative. Okay, Garrett. This year at Halloween Horror Nights, Wonder Park, The Maze, where it's only June as the only pop-up scare. The only scare actor is just June flaunting her sociopathic, somehow mind-controlling tendencies over other children. And at the end of it, you go into a gyrosphere and get thrown across the black hawk. She keeps trying to hand you a uh, fountainhead. And it uses the alien encounter binaural sound to whisper instructions. <laughs> <laughs> well, as usual, you are all wrong because the whole movie is wrong. And everything is wrong, including this suggestion right here. I'm telling you, 
this movie is going to make so little money that they're going to want the attraction to be as cheap as humanly possible. So they're just going to let a bunch of wild animals into Nickelodeon Universe at the Mall of America. Just a bunch of rabid wild animals that will feast on your damn wiener kids' carcasses. And they'll all go to hell where they belong. Yeah, though this movie came out a little late, but this is why Trump is president. The sad thing is, you're not wrong. <laughs> So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, holy fuck, come with me and you'll be in a world of pure excruciation. Porcupines fall in love with the warthog. Oink. Nothing is, has a rhyme or reason, fuck you. All you do is ride the coaster. Things will happen to farther. I'm not even saying leading. things. My eyes are bleeding. Fuck this movie. Really is, Willy Wonka's boat ride is makes a lot more sense in the theme park. <laughs> a lot more really? enjoyable yeah. too. <laughs> See literally anything else. Cool movie. Ten out of ten. I hurt myself. Today. This video was made possible by the very generous contributions to my Patreon. Special thanks to all my patrons, and huge special thanks in particular to Mark Aquino, Bennett Ballard, Ryan Eno, Max Fagan, Noah Fine, Wesley Fox, Michael Hamilton, Jacob Harris, Tom Hart, Houston Housley, Morgan Kellis, Dustin Kosky, Kate Quinn, Michael Rose, and Brett Trail. Extra huge special thanks to Keith Baggs, super extra huge special thanks to Ryan Walterson, and super duper extra huge special thanks to executive producers Joe Goldmark and Edgar Barrocho. If I mispronounced anyone's name, please send me a message letting me know. Thanks for watching, please like, share, and subscribe, and once again, I apologize if the rhetoric got a little extreme on this one. For what it's worth, I vow that future editions of One Movie Later will contain zero similar murder spasms. Ha! <sighs> well, yeah. finally got Wonder Park out of the way. <laughs> What do we got next? I just had an astonishing revelation. What? This movie is not good. <laughs>